Joining me, Trent Crane. Trent, good morning. Thanks for taking a bit of time out of your busy day. Is it a, still a school day? Would you consider this a school day still? Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> one of the most important things is uh, keeping up with school right now. I know the teachers are working really hard to get us our schoolwork and give us assignments and tests that we need to do. And uh, obviously, we're really thankful for that. And yeah, uh, <clears throat> right now I'm doing pretty good, so it's good. So are you enjoying learning on your own, or would you prefer to be more social with the boys, hanging out in class, in front um, of a teacher raising your hand? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I really like being around with the guys in class, but um, I, to be honest, I don't really mind this. Like, uh, working on my own time, like in my own room, is uh, pretty fun too. Just, it's all quiet too. You got nothing to worry about, and you just work off on your own speed instead of the teacher's speed, which is not a problem at all. So you're a little bit ahead of class is what you're saying, perhaps? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Okay, so the day normally when you have normal classes and whatnot is completely different. Uh, quickly go over what it was like going to school in the fall compared to what it's like now. Um, I think one of the biggest differences is that uh, uh, going to class, you, it'd always be like really busy too, like <clears throat> showing up a little late just from practices in the morning. Is a, a big thing and then but there's right now I can work at like my own time like I can wake up when I want and I already have my assignments ready for me like uh, an essay or a history assignment which is perfect and I think that's probably one of the biggest changes too is that the teacher has got some leeway for like when you can hand in assignments which is a pretty good uh, upgrade so I'd have to say that <laughs> so there's a poem that was written by Robert Frost, The Road Less Traveled. We're going to talk about the ice more traveled for you, Trent, because you've played on several different teams. You've been playing with several different organizations. Do you remember the first time you strapped on the skates and said, I want to play hockey? Um, I don't think I can. I want to say maybe four years old. Uh, I think I went into like one of those power skating camps. I think that was the first time I strapped the skates on. And then I want to say around age five, I had a stick in my hand and started like uh, shooting clocks. And I think that was my first time. So growing up, do you have any older brothers at all that were lending their hands to you and learning the game with you as well? or No, all I had was my mom and dad. <clears throat> um, both my parents did a really good job of teaching me the game and at a really young age, and I'm really thankful for them. So growing up, minor hockey, where did you play? Your, where were your minor hockey roots at? Um, I started my uh, minor hockey years off in Morden, Manitoba. And then I, a couple years later, I moved to Winkler and uh, started playing in the Winkler minor system. And, uh, yep. Working your way through. Now you're playing. You just finished up this season. Double-A, uh, triple-A. How did you? How were you able to progress? What was the what was the key ingredient to your progression of your game? Um, I think the key ingredient was always working on my skating, trying to get faster. Because uh, I would say in today's game, the speed is the game, especially like uh, in higher levels. Like you need to be pretty quick on the ice because everyone's getting stronger and faster. So you always need to keep your speed as high as possible. So. In the summer, I'd go to like a lot of camps uh, to help my skating and try and get f as fast as possible. So this year, what was the what was the schedule like for you? Uh, you know, for school and for hockey. I mean, you said early morning practices. Did you get back to the rink in the afternoon? Uh yeah, for sure. Like especially in OCN, we started practices around eight to nine uh, in the morning, and then we go to school around 11, <clears throat> 12 ish, and then we'd have probably a workout after school around four maybe five so it was always a busy day i'd be really exhausted coming home so it's a grueling uh it's not is it is it grueling is it or is it something you look forward to getting on the ice no it's i'm very excited to get back on the ice i honestly miss it so much like uh yeah i, I can't imagine not being on the ice for this long i just need to really get back into it you're getting that it's like did you make sure the skates still fit i mean do, do the feet still grow right now trent or are they gonna no, be okay no. No, my skates are perfect right now. I'm just looking forward to getting back on. Right on. Now, let's quickly, equipment has changed tremendously in your age and my age as well. I mean, you know, you talk about wood sticks to composites to Easton that no longer make sticks and now there's, do you have a favorite company, your go-to crew that you kind of pick up your gear with or is it mostly team gear that whatever they supply you take? Um, I'd have to say it's probably team gear, but if I had to pick a sponsor, it'd probably be like TCM. They're very good. They make 
pretty good uh, sticks, and I'm very thankful for all the equipment that I've gotten from all my teams, and I couldn't ask for any more. Absolutely. So let's go over some of the road trips. Favorite road trips of the year? Um, I think my favorite road trip would have to be the Winkler road trip on my birthday on February 2nd when I got to play back at home on my birthday. I think that was a special, special game for me. It's kind of cool that it kind of worked out that way. I mean, you get to play at home. With your family's there watching you, obviously. And Yeah, for sure. Did you guys win or lose? Uh, we lost in overtime. Uh, it was a tough game. But still, you got to celebrate nonetheless, right? Yeah, nonetheless, nonetheless. Right on. So how do you – the jump to OCN, I mean, was that something that you expected? Was that, the, was that the next goal for you, Trent, or was that just something that kind of fell in your lap and said, okay, this is my next plan of attack? Let's see what happens. Um, I think one of the biggest things was is that when I was playing AAA hockey at the start of the year, I, I felt like I uh, I wasn't getting better. Uh, I felt like uh, I could have improved it a little bit more. So, And then I got to play one game with OCN, and I felt like the speed of the, the MJ and the, the physicality and how much how I got to play against older guys was a very big key, and uh, I felt like when they offered me a contract to play the rest of the year with them, that was a big step, and I really needed to do that, especially if I want to have a chance at uh, Victoria next year. So, yeah, because uh, you got to get used to playing against older guys, bigger guys, and I think that was a big, a big, big key. Let's talk about that. I mean, you talk about going from Double A AA to Triple A, playing at home, to now taking that contract and playing MJ. Now your your goals and your aspirations get to Victoria. What sets you up to hit that next goal? Like, what's the important parts of the puzzle need to be there so that you feel more comfortable and you're ready to go to that next level? Um, I think one of the biggest things is that I need to work hard this summer to stay in shape and keep my weight at a at a perfect like limit because I I don't want to be too big and I don't want to be too small. So. Uh, I want to be ready when it comes to the spring camp so I can show Victoria that I want to be there next year. Fabulous. So that is the goal to play in Victoria next year? And Yes, um, absolutely. So did they offer you like a, a letter or an invitation to camp? or? Um, I signed about two to three years ago, and I've been going to the spring camps and playing preseason uh, ever since. Uh, this last this last year was my actually first WHL game against the Winnipeg Ice when they were in town. And I got to stay with them for a, around a week. And when I got to talk to them, it sounded like I could be there next year, which I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping, but I can't get my hopes up. I gotta, if I want it, I got to work for it. That sounds like a fantastic idea. We're going to take a quick break with Trent Crane because you've made a couple of big jumps this year, Trent. And we want to talk more about that when we come back right after this. Okay. With Trent Crane wearing three different buckets in one year, like Triple A, Junior, Dub, like that's a bit of movement for one player. You obviously must have enjoyed it. Yeah, obviously it was a it was a great experience. Like uh, especially going from uh, a cage or a, a bubble, I would say, to a visor. That was a uh, pretty fun. And uh, even at the games, there was more crowds, and it was a bigger bigger environment. And then, uh, a lot of energy at all the rink, so obviously I had a lot of fun this year. So as a player, as a as a sports person, do you feed off the energy of the crowds? I mean, you'd be, you'd be stupid to say no, but I mean, how important is it, I mean, considering the situation we're in, 
the thoughts and discussions of not allowing crowds to come in or spectators, obviously for safety reasons. Would you be able to play the game at your caliber and your energy level without crowds in the stands? Um, I'm going to have to say it would be really hard because uh, the crowds really give the players energy. I don't know if, that, if that's just for me, but especially when I'm playing in the game, it's like if we score a big goal and the crowd goes nuts, that just that gives me a lot of energy to keep pushing and keep grinding. So it, it's definitely going to be difficult if they keep that going. Absolutely. I mean, that's I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, you look around and you see spectators and you see empty seats. It's like, well, what are we playing for? The, the fans and the TV seat and that even yeah, so it doesn't work, right? Yeah, for sure. So the, the plan is there. The plan of attack is there. The off-season training, like you said, that balance of being the right weight and maintaining the speed. What type of regime are you working on right now, Trent, that gives you that uh, opportunity to hit that goal? Oh, uh, I think one of the biggest things that I'm doing right now is a lot of sprinting, a lot of uh, uh, bike, uh, bike cycling, sorry, uh, in sessions. But I think I have to say one of the biggest things I've tried in the last three days is a vegan diet. Um, I recently watched a movie on Netflix called Game Changers, and it Great showed movie. me it, a very good movie, and it showed me that I could try a, a vegan diet for seven days. So um, I've been going at it for the last three days, and it's been really good. Um, I might try for the next four months, to be honest. So I'm going to keep going and keep grinding. It's, it's been really good so far, and it's actually – I can feel the difference. Like I, I have more energy in the day to run or to shoot more box. And yeah, it's been great so far. So I'm going to have to keep that going. I think I've watched it four times. Uh, a lot of my family is vegan. Uh, yeah. And I think it's, it, we won't go too much on the movie, but if you haven't seen it and you'd like to see it from a per sports performance athlete perspective, go check it out. I'm pretty sure you'd endorse it as well. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. I just, the sources of, uh, I mean, just what energy levels are required and just the, the anomalies and just the falseness that's out there is pretty impressive that we're being pressed and pushed to think of one way when we should be thinking another. Yeah, exactly, 100%. So you're replacing steaks with uh, bean patties. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's exactly what you're hearing. Uh, the other day I had a, a, bean and, a black bean and a rice burrito, and it was actually really good. I was very surprised. I, I find that hot sauce works well. Yes. Kind of gives it a bit of an extra touch. Exactly. 100%. There you go. So black beans, uh, obviously lentils. What other things have you been incorporating in your diet that's kept your energy level and your protein levels up? Um, this, uh, For an example, this morning I had a fruit salad with uh, some vegan yogurt, and it was actually really good. Like I can already feel – like I caught a lot of energy right now. Like uh, I'm probably going to go for a run after this or shoot some pucks or do something. And uh, I had a uh, – a banana chocolate muffin that was all vegan too and it was really good and yeah it was, I, I don't know like it's been really good so far that's awesome no it's really good i hope you keep up with it i mean at least in most of your diet i mean if you can i mean take away a lot of that product in there and you realize the key thing is the inflammation marker that comes in directly after and directly uh, during an event i mean when you're playing almost daily and you need to be on the ice all the time your inflammation and your in injuries can play a huge part in how much ice time you get. And you want to be available all the time. Yeah, exactly, 100%. That's a, that's a huge key. So how fast is your slap shot? Uh, um, I wouldn't know, I'll be honest. I don't take very many unless it's like a, a one-timer or something. I mostly work on my snap shot right now. A lot of uh, snap shots, the key, to, the way to go. It, same velocity, it gets there quick, and no one has to line up like line A to let her rip. Yeah, 100%, exactly. So a two-on-one, one, one more ice question. Two-on-ones, are you a shooter or a passer? I'm always been a passer. Like the, I've, I found that the pass is always usually there, especially if you make it first. If you make a quick pass early and that it draws the defense and the goalie over and then you make that pass back, then that's a perfect play. And the goalie and the defense don't know what happened because you'll, you'll already be behind them. So it's basically almost a two-on-all. But, that yeah, I'm always a passer. I always look for pass. Can I ask you a question? I mean, I've coached defense, I've coached forward, and I always ask my forwards this one question. Why do we slow down when we hit the blue line? Um, I think one of the biggest things is that, uh, to be honest, I think you're, everyone likes to overthink it. Like, uh, like 
if you're about to make a play and you kind of overthink it, then your feet stop moving and you don't really think about it. But to be honest, like most people, I wouldn't say we all think about like our like stopping at the blue line, but it it does happen a lot for sure. Like I, I I've always fathomed that because you defensemen can skate backwards fairly well at your level, but you can skate forward a whole lot quicker than them. Why don't you just go around them? Yeah, totally. 100%. Yeah, okay. So you're on the same page. So outside of the school, outside of the class, outside of, you know, shooting pucks, going for runs, keeping your off-season training, what else does Trent like to do during the day? Um, I'd have to say one of the biggest things is uh, Fortnite right now uh, on the PS4. That's probably the biggest one I've been spending my time on or playing NHL 20. I think that's two of the biggest things. Or um, in the next couple of days, the golf course in Winkler is supposed to open, and I'll probably be going there every single day and uh, spending most of my time out of my day on doing that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Golf courses are getting the green lights, so to speak. May the 4th be with them. And the bottom line is open air and a lot of enjoyable outdoor time is needed by everybody. And If you haven't picked up a golf game, go and pick it up because, yeah, you got lots of space. I mean, I never understood. Oh. I've never seen golfers stand six feet beside each other uh, you know, dealing with uh, closeness and isolation. Golf courses seem to be pretty large. Yeah, totally. <laughs> really large. <now. laughs> so we're getting rid of the PS4. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to floss or do a weird, wicked Fortnite dance. That's not my jive. Uh, Go-to team in NHL 20? Um, Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Okay. Is it because you can play, like, just one line all the time, or do you play? Or do you cycle through the lines? Uh, they cycle. I cycle through the lines because to me, uh, the top three lines are pretty strong and they're all pretty fast. So it's a pretty good team. I'm pretty sure it's got a highly overrated defense, though, right? <laughs> maybe, just maybe. <laughs> are you a Leafs fan in real life? Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. But... All right. So you like the young. Obviously, the young talent that the Leafs have is pretty important. Where? I mean, growing up, there's obviously people you want to look up to as being role models for you. Who did you emulate? Growing up, shooting the pucks on the ice, off the ice, in the sidewalks, in the driveway. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I like. I think one of my favorite players right now would have to be Matthew Barzell. I love the way he plays the game. Uh, he's very quick and he's always on his edges. But if I had to say someone, it would probably be Sidney Crosby because I really like the way he was on his. He was always on his edges. He's really quick, and his shot on his both shots, like just. Uh, the way he plays the game is just unreal. Like it's it's amazing to watch when you're in person too, because he always is doing something perfect in the game. Do you think Sid is still the best player in the NHL, or is you know McKinnon or '97 taking over? Um, to be honest, I think '97 is taking over right now. Like, uh, but I would only say that's because Crosby's getting he's getting older. Like he's not like in his prime like uh, when he was, but he's still I have to say one of the best. Absolutely. If you had to build a team, a franchise team in Seattle, you're taking 87, 97, or you're taking uh, – I'll throw in Johnny Taves, 19 there as well, just in case, for a Winnipeg kid. Um, no, I'd say I'd have to take 87. That's a smart just the, move. Yeah, just the leadership and the qualities around him, just perfect guy. You talked about balance earlier, Trent. What part of your game needs to improve so that balance improves in your own game? Mm, I think the one of the biggest parts I need to really improve on is uh, probably shooting. Uh, I know like uh, taking shots are like one is a big key. And so every day I've been shooting and shooting and shooting to make sure that my shot gets harder and harder so that uh, when the opportunities come that I'm burying and, and, and not missing those opportunities when, when they're available. Perfect. So that's, I mean, that's a great thing. Great mention there. What game surprises most players when they see you and they're like, ooh, I didn't expect that from that kid? Um, I'd have to say probably my quickness, uh, especially in junior hockey, uh, uh, coming into the league as a 16-year-old, I think my quickness kind of surprises some people, but um, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Maybe, I'm just hoping, maybe, yeah. You just hope maybe those keys work and Victoria says, here's your spot, here's your jersey. Yeah. Totally. Speaking of speaking of jersey, do you always wear the same number? Or have you always rotated around numbers? Um. Well, normally I've been number eleven, but this year I was uh, thirteen, and then for when I played in the in the WHL, I was number ten. So I've been kind of switching around lately. Eleven because. Um. 
I don't know. I just like the I like the double digits one one. I think it's a it looks good on the back too. There you go. So it's all about it's all about the, what it looks like. Perfect. Yeah. Right on. Uh, so we've talked about your diet, how it's changed. Uh, snacks before bed, snacks before games. Obviously, that's going to change for you as well. Uh, mom or dad? I mean, who cooks better for you now, or do you do your own cooking? Um, my mom probably does the best cooking, especially on this vegan diet. She's been doing really good the last three days for me and my cousin. So I, I'm really impressed. Uh, some of the snacks that we've been eating are uh, good made uh, granola bars and um, enjoy life chewy bars and uh, fruit salads and crispy minis uh, with uh, like sunflower seed peanut butter. So it's been really good. You're going all out on the strength. I'm impressed. Yeah. I really am. Is dad on board with this or is he looking forward to taking over the freezer? Right now he's uh, on board for it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go see him in a couple days. So, and he's going to have to make me a vegan diet, vegan diet meal. So we'll see what happens. That's awesome. Good. And you said your cousin's on it as well. Yeah. Uh, my cousin Brock McDonald's on it right now. Cool. That's good. Music. Let's talk a little bit of music trend. Let's get inside. Let's get outside the hockey world. We talked about a little bit of eating, which is good. What's playing in the uh, MP3 player right now? Um, I don't know. The, a lot of country music right now. I'm really, I'm a big country fan. Um, I like rap too. So it's been a mix of everything. So I, I couldn't really name one song that I'd really like right now. It's pretty impressive. I talked to a lot of players and it's, you know, obviously it's like hard rock or rap during or before a game getting them pumped up, but the country and the rap context, like how those two blend together is somewhat amazing. I mean, I did the same growing up too. I mean, I had Toby Keith and Garth Brooks back in the day and yeah. you know, you mentioned, I can't mention nearly as many rappers as I can now, but the old school guys is where I follow it at. So that's the country kind of keeps you calm, keeps you chill and the yeah, totally. yeah. yeah, the country, the the country after a game, like especially a big win, is definitely just calms you down. Or even a loss too, the country just keeps you level and keeps you at the same mindset. And then the rap before the game just gets that blood, uh, that blood heart rate a little bit up and gets you ready for the game. For sure. Is there a movie you watched a lot on the road on the bus trips, or do you guys just kind of watch your own thing? Um, one of the things I think we do is that, uh, we all watch like kind of a show like that we've like all known or like that we keep watching. But me personally, I think a movie, a big movie that I like to watch on, uh, on my phone or on my tablet is probably Miracle on Ice. It's a really big, good, really good movie before a game. Uh, and yeah, it definitely gets you like ready and it gets you focused on the game. So I have to see that one. Favorite barn to play in this year? I think my favorite barn uh, I like to play in this year would have to be probably Winkler, uh, just because it's a hometown rink. I've played there uh, almost my whole life, and just being in that rink is uh, is pretty cool. Least favorite barn to play in? Uh, I'd have to say Swan Valley Stampeders. I. The rink is too small for me. Uh, it's not very big, so and it's pretty dark in there. That I, th I think they need better lighting, but that, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Okay. Uh, go to guy to talk to in the locker room when times are tough. Uh, definitely has to be Ben Hillhorse, uh, our captain. He's a really good guy. Like if you're down, he's gonna he's definitely gonna bring the morale up. Uh, he's very motivational, and just listening to him uh, can get you going and. Get you ready for the game. Favorite Sully? Um, I don't really have a favorite Sully. Uh, I don't really Sully that much, but if I had to pick one, it's probably like the, the bow and arrow when you go on one knee. That's probably one of my favorites. It's the sharpshooter, the sniper, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Last question I'm going to ask your last comment. I'm going to give you a chance before I say I'll let you go. During these times, these isolation times, you probably haven't seen a lot of people, a lot of your friends. Uh, visibly one-on-one, -on -one, obviously through Zooms or chats and whatnot worked out. What is the first thing you're going to tell your friends when you can see them in person? Uh, definitely I miss them, but if I had to say one thing, that I, I kicked their butts in Fortnite. <laughs> the leader on the screen and the motivator when you see them in person. Trent, is there anything you'd like to say? Is there anyone you'd like to say hello to before we say goodbye? And um, I just want to say thanks to uh, my parents and all uh, my uh, my family and all my friends for uh, uh, 
like being with me in these hard times. And I'd like to say thanks to all the teachers and medical workers that are doing a, a great job to keep this virus down. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for interviewing me. Trent Crane, uh, I'm not going to say who you're with because we don't know where you're playing next, right? It's kind of up in the air, but we hope that we get to see you in Victoria. Uh, we hope that your next goal is attained. We really appreciate the time with you today, and it was great to catch up with you as well. Uh, hopefully, you're able to grab some green grass in the next coming weeks for the golf game, and thank you again for this time. I really appreciate it, sharing some light on making those jumps so quickly in your career and seeing that it can be done in other people's careers. This has been On the Ice, Trent Crane joining with me on this fine day. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you guys soon. You too. Thank you.